June 13th, 2022. From El Cajon, California, this is episode 259 of You Can Bet On That. Hi, everybody. Welcome to You Can Bet On That, a podcast for the recreational gambler. My name is Mark Duvall, and sitting across from me is Dr. Mike. Hello. All right. We are back from Las Vegas, so we've got a lot to talk about. We'll start with my playing in the World Series of Poker. Yep. Then we'll uh, talk about the trip in general, and we'll wrap it up with a discussion about your move to Minnesota, which is less than a week away here. Yes. We do have some voicemails, of course. I think we'll hold off on those until the next episode, just because I think we've got a lot to go through here today. Yeah, yeah. I think we had a... uh Interesting trip. Yes, I'd say overall a successful trip. Certainly, yes, we had a very yes. good time. Yeah, on we the had trip. a great time. Yeah, I'll just start off by saying that I did not cash in the World Series of Poker event, yes. so <laughs> I won't uh, leave any suspense there. But let's talk about that. So we got there late on a Thursday night. We probably got there around midnight, something like that. Right? Yeah, and, and it's close in. to midnight. Yeah. No problem checking in. So thanks to Vinny Chance, he had suggested that I register for the tournament at off hours. The registration area is open 24-7, but if you're trying to register close to a big event coming up, especially one of the lower limit, big no limit hold'em tournaments, you know, you might be in quite a line. So Yeah, there were long lines all throughout yeah. the week in there. We the line never seemed to go yeah. down. So I got in line about 1.30 a.m. There still was a line. Yeah. Not all the windows were open. So that was a lot of it was, you know, right. there was there were right. only a few uh, windows open. And I stood in line for about five minutes before one of the employees said, anybody with diamond or seven star status? And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, well, you can come over to this line. There were no signs. Yeah. I might have said like VIP, but I, you know, I didn't know what that meant, right? So right. I got into a shorter line. So that was uh, no problem. So registered again, $1,500 for the Omaha high-low limit tournament the next day. Started about 3 p.m. It was scheduled to go to about 2 a.m. And sat down, and, you know, it was automatically very exciting. You know, yeah, you're in the, sure. the big room like this. And so the first thing I noticed was that the play was the tightest I've ever seen for an Omaha 8 right. tournament. No surprise. Well, when it started... And your initial group of players, you were the youngest. <laughs> That's right. You were standing behind. <laughs> yeah. watching me. I was like, uh, Mark's the youngest on this table. <laughs> yep. Obviously, a lot of seasoned veterans yes. in the game. Grizzly. <laughs> they knew about hand selection being so important. So a right. lot of folding before the flop. And one of the adjustments I had to make for that was... If the hand went to showdown, and it was a while before we even had the first hand go to showdown, but right. if the hand went to showdown, the hands were not as high as I'm used to playing, you know, when I'm just playing with my friends. Right. Because the players are so much tighter. Right. You know, right. at the end, it's like, oh, I got a pair of queens. Right. You know, what? Yeah. Really? You don't have a flush or a straight <laughs> with everything out there, right? And yeah. even the lows, unless it was like ace twos, people were playing ace twos. Sometimes, you know, the lows, people would back, oh, I've got eight five for low. Yeah. Okay, you'll get the low. So that was the one major adjustment that I had to make. I hope I did anyway. Also, a lot of pre flop raising, at least in our home game, there's very little pre flop raising. Right. Because it's not a tight game. Right. right, it's like, do I want to really build yeah, the pot at this point? Right, when well, you know where it's going to call, right, right, right. right. So a lot more pre-flop raising, and it's something that I don't normally do. And of course, I did in this situation whenever I had a hand that I thought was good. And you know, right. there were a couple of times where everyone folded to me, and you know, there was no flop, and you know, I just picked up on that. So, but it was a very good game. I'm, I, I, I guess I'll say I'm very disappointed that I went out before the money. Right. I even went out before the end of day one. But very close to the end of it day was one. Very, yeah. The, so day one ended at 2 a.m. I went out at about 1.15, 1.20. Yeah. Yeah. I am happy with the way I played. Yeah, you And played as well. a poker player, I'm more concerned about that, really. Right. You know, because if you feel that you didn't play very well, at least in my case, you just beat yourself up afterwards. You're right. thinking, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Well, nobody laughed when you went out. That was a good sign. <laughs> was the room was sign. silent. People were in awe. They're, he's out, and you know, no laughing, nothing. So. I was probably the only WSOP virgin at my table, based oh, on the talk. For sure. Yeah. But I don't think I gave that off. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. 
but I don't think I did because I wasn't, re- you know, I wasn't making mistakes, and right. you know, we were the discussions we were having. Uh, so hopefully, I <laughs> <laughs> fooled them into uh, <laughs> not knowing that it was my first time. But I'll tell you how I went out. I had some good hands, but then my chips just started dwindling. Well, the blinds go up, and you yeah. know, you have to win some hands. You have to catch some cards. Yep. That's a given. Yeah. And no matter how good a player you are, if you don't catch hands at the right time, yeah. it's going to wear. So I was pretty low. In fact, I even tweeted out. It's like, oh, I'm on life support here. So I already had a low stack. I had four high cards, like four Broadway cards, so, you know, I'm kind of hesitant to play those, but I'm running out of chips. And, you know, it gives you an opportunity to scoop if there's only a high for those right. familiar with Omaha. Because usually I like to have an ace in my hand and at least have the ability to win both ways, high yeah. and low. But well, I that's what have... shoots you up. Right, is right, that right. Scooping up. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I had high cards. Well, the flop came with an ace and two hearts. And I had the queen and jack of hearts. Okay. So if I make my flush, it's not the nut flush. Right. But the critical thing is here, the ace of hearts is on the board. Right. And typically people are staying in with aces, yes, but not with, say, you know, a suited king. Right, right. It can happen, but... So I've got queen of jack of hearts, and there was a bet I raised, I got called, and then sure enough, the third heart for the board came out on the turn, and then I bet I got raised, and it's like, uh uh-oh. Yeah, you know, th- yeah, there was a low out there, so it's like maybe he's raising for low, low yeah. but generally you you don't necessarily raise when you have low because you could be quartered, right? Right, you know that mm-hmm. can happen. And I thought, well, I'm too low right now. You know, I may win this pot, I may get half the pot, but I have virtually no more chips. So I felt like right. I had to call, and sure enough, I did lose to a king three yeah. <laughs> of hearts. Yeah. Right? That's and, rough. And then the hand after that, I had just a little bit more than the big blind. And I was the big blind. So of course I went all in. I don't even course. remember what happened there at the end, but I, you know, that yeah. was I went out. So that's kind of how so you got quartered once, I believe, right? I did get quartered once, yeah, right? And, which is rough. I hate that. You know, that's again, this is a high low game, and a lot of times on the low part. Two or more people will have the exact same hand. Right. And so depending on how many people are left in the hand, you could actually lose money on the hand. Yes. Because you're only getting a quarter of a pot that maybe three people contributed to. Right. right? So that did happen to me, yeah, at least once. So if I'm second guessing myself at all, it is on that hand with the Queen Jack. Yeah. But I I wouldn't. Yeah, I don't know. What could you do? I mean, you know, that's the way poker goes, right? He very easily could have had a 10 and a four or something, right? Well, or whatever. And, and plus, since and, it's a high-low game, you don't necessarily know which way the other right. person's going, right? He could have right? gone and low. There he were three low cards flush. on the flop. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, send your uh, <laughs> criticisms to... You can bet on that at gmail.com, and I'll take them with a grain of salt. But it was a lot of fun. I mean, this tournament was great. There were celebrities there, certainly there. Phil Helmuth was uh, in the tournament. He was a few tables over. Scott Seaver was one table over from me. Oh, I, I outlasted him. him yeah. yeah, I outlasted more than half the field. Right. So I can kind of take that away. But I also want to say I'm disappointed. Yeah. Well, there you was know, like 1,100 people, yes, close to 1,100 mm-hmm. people entered. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you're in the top half. That's yeah. pretty decent. I know it is something, but honestly, I, yeah. You know, I, 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 I know, know. I know. <laughs> well, let me tell you this. All right. You didn't really want to win anyway. Well, you don't wear bracelets. I've known you for 40 years. I've never seen you wear a bracelet. No, other than just a watch, a or watch, wristband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never wear bracelets. If they'd been giving away a maybe a dishwasher mm. or a washing machine yeah. as first prize at, with the money, yeah. that would have been more motivation That for would you. be good. Oh, did you win yeah. a WSOP washing machine? Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, where is it? Don't you carry it around? No, we use it's it to It's in the back clothes. of my truck yeah. here. <laughs> Also, 2019 WSOP Player of the Year Rob Campbell was at my table. He's easy to spot because he's got an Australian Any accent. accent uh, right. That's uh, one of those things. But I'll tell you, he corrected me on a technicality. So this is a limit tournament, right? And at one point, the bet was 1,200 chips. And I didn't have a 1,000 chip. So I threw in a 5,000 chip and 200 chips. Right. Right? For 5,200. Thinking, oh, and I'll get 4,000 change. Back. Okay. Yeah. Well, anybody who's familiar with poker knows that the fact that I added those $200 chips you were raising. makes that a raise. If I had just thrown in the 5,000 and not said anything, that's right. a call. That's a call. Right. Right. And it's so frustrating because I almost always verbalize my intentions. Yeah. You see me at the table, raise, fold. I, I do it before I make any action. For some reason, I didn't in this case. 
and I threw in $5,200. Well, the guy across from me kind of saw what I was doing. He made change for me real quick, and they just accepted it as a bet, yeah, just a bet. That was I'm nice. St- and I'm still not registering that I've done something wrong. Right. The ironic thing is that I won the hand, and a raise would have been good for me. Right? <laughs> I would have made more money if I'd actually raised. So, But anyway, after the fact, Rob actually said, you know, that was technically a raise that you made. At first, I didn't understand what he was saying. He said it was technically a raise. It's like, oh my gosh, you're right. I'm so used to our home game. Right. You know, if I'd right. done that at the home game, it wouldn't be. And it's the reason I mentioned it too, it's a limit tournament. So I'm obviously not raising to $5,200, right. which would be the case if it had been a no-limit tournament. Right. That's a raise, and that's going to stick, right? Right. I'm obviously just calling the $1,200. Yeah. But technically, I mean, he's absolutely right. So I was glad that he actually called me out on that le- lesson learned at uh, Tournament Well, he's, he texted you that he wasn't really calling you out. Well, yes. He didn't so, mean to. Uh, uh, what happened was I tweeted about it, and yeah. then he responded with a tweet saying, I wasn't really calling you out, just calling your attention to it. And I wrote him and I said, oh, I completely understand. And thank you for saying Same. something. I was actually right. glad he did say something. So yeah, it was nice to get a response to yeah. that uh, tweet <laughs> that I put out there. One thing, I don't even think I told you about this, Mike. So at one point, the blinds were 1,500, 2,500. And about halfway through the round, the announcer came on and said, attention, Omaha 8 players and dealers. We should be at 1,000. 2,500 blinds, 1,500. I think they changed it because that was the way it was printed on the original structure sheet. Oh, okay. And somebody caught it, uh-huh. right? Because really, 1,500, 2,500 really makes more, more sense, sense. <laughs> right. than 1,000, exactly. 2,500, but that was the way they printed. And yes, of course, I had just put in my small blind on the last uh-huh. hand at 1,500, and of course, they're not going to go back and yeah, you know, you redo it. you should have turned to the person who won that hand, the previous hand, just, you owe me 500. <laughs> done it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, give me 500. But I thought that was interesting, and I, you know, I looked up at the board. You could actually see whoever was, you know, at the computer <laughs> typing in 1,000 over, yeah. you know, 1,500, so... Again, this was my first World Series of Poker. Previously, or at least before this, I should say, it had taken place at Rio, right, which is off strip. The consensus amongst the players was this is a much better venue, just all around. One reason was because it wasn't quite as cold. You know, you always hear about how cold it was at Rio. You know, it's the middle of summer, but they got that AC blasting. Right. This was actually very comfortable. I was in short sleeves and shorts, and it was No, it was a perfect temperature. It wasn't hot in there. It wasn't cold. Yeah, so I think overall people were saying, okay, this is a much better venue than Rio. One of the players was saying that ESPN is not quite as happy because you know they could just pull their trucks up right at Rio and not right. have to deal with all that strip traffic right, and everything. Right, else. right. So maybe they're struggling a little bit, but at least from a player, they seem to be. Well, the uh, one thing happy. about the Rio that always I always thought was weird is the players can't all be staying at Rio because they probably don't have enough rooms. So you have to come from somewhere. You have to get a cab to go over there or drive over there or whatever. On the Strip, you know, you could be staying over at Paris and just walk over. For the players, it's just better located. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of fun to have on the Strip. Now, Bally's is transitioning to Horseshoe, and I think their original intent was to have that all ready for this WSOP. Right. But we saw very little. No. In the way of the transition. Yeah, it was the, all pretty much Bally still. Yeah, there was going to be a Jack Binion Steakhouse that they're installing there. We saw the facade for that, but that wasn't open yet. Yeah, yeah if you'd gone in, I, I didn't get any sense that they were changing. But no. Maybe no. by next year. If it had changed, they wouldn't have had Star Wars on the TVs. <laughs> oh, God. Once again, at Bally's, <laughs> we're walking by Star Wars. This time, it was, I think it was episode two. Yeah, episode two, yeah. But no, not a sporting event. Star, Star Wars, Wars in the casino uh, yeah, second on the Second time monitor. at Bally's. Whoever's in charge of that, there's probably some one guy in charge of it, and he's just a huge Star Wars fan. <laughs> and when it's like early in the morning, he's like, let's just have at least one TV with Star Wars on. <laughs> I want to see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Should we put the closed captioning on? No, I know what no, happens. No. <laughs> well, what? You just said. Hey, I want to say thanks to Jim from New York thanks. for encouraging me to play. He was the one who met, originally on Twitter said, hey, you going to do this? Like, yeah. Okay. I also want to thank Vinny Chens, Tim Lawson, and you, Dr. Mike, for buying a piece of me. Yes. Right? It helped kind of cover the cost there. I wish I could have brought you a return ah, on your investment. but it, uh, was, um, it was good to be in there thinking, you know, we have a chance. Yeah. People have been asking me, would I play again? And my answer might surprise you. Probably not. Right. I can understand that. For several reasons. Some of it's the investment. You know, most players in a tournament lose 
their money, right? right. You know, that's right. just the way that it goes. That's one of the lower concerns, though, but it is something. Yeah. Uh, number two is a time, the amount of time that it takes. Now, that's a bigger concern. Yeah, I was fine that first day, you know, going yeah. the 12 hours or 11 hours or whatever it was. I'm pretty able to stay focused. So I think right. I could do it over a three day event. I could never do the main event. No, over those not if you make days. the but, final table, you're uh, there forever. <laughs> yeah, no, I couldn't do I yeah. couldn't handle um, that. But that's the other thing. The third thing is kind of the mood at the table. And this is almost true of all poker tables. <laughs> you know, poker players, you're playing against each other. Right. And even though everybody at my table was friendly, there's sort of a negativity to everything. Right. You know, like being mad at the way you played a hand or that somebody sucked out on you or just bad beat stories. Right. And again, even though everybody at my table was friendly, there was a lot of complaining, not just about poker, about other things, tournaments they'd been into, how it's, you know, not being run well, right. the, the right. volume of the overhead speakers, you know, and so... Yeah, that just kind of, I'm kind of a positive person. So, it, you know, it's a little hard to deal with the negative. Of all the games that are, where multiple players are involved, you know, not like a slot machine where you're by yeah, yourself, right. but multiple players, I think craps is the most friendly. I mean, this is just my opinion. Okay. Craps players seem to be more, more friendly. You do have every once in a while somebody who's a little off, but yeah. most of the time they're friendly. Yeah. And then maybe, you know, roulette and bakra kind of up there. Blackjack players can be terrible. No, and we'll I talk mean, about that later. Yeah, blackjack players yeah. can be mm-hmm. terrible. Yeah. But I think poker's the worst. Could be, just yeah. because, you know, of you can play perfectly and lose. You know, right. it's one of those things where right. you can do everything right and the poker gods will not right. reward you, you know? Right, right. So uh, that and, and just you're competitive against other people. Yeah. When we're in our home group, we're giving each other a hard time, but we're not really mad yeah because you know there are friends yeah but when you're playing with strangers and everything and and you know someone could get on your nerves right it's yeah. just a yeah. i don't know it's just not the friendliest of environments right. let's say that yeah. another reason i'm just not really much of a tournament guy i prefer a cash, cash game. game i right. you know we here we're talking about the negativity but i'll play poker in a casino if it's a cash game right i like that because yeah. you know you you could win, you could lose, you know, if you yeah, run you out of money. you can walk away whenever you yeah, want. Right. You're you know, tired, so, you just color up or, right. you know, whatever. Yeah, so another reason, well, the novelty's gone, you know, doing it the first time, right? right? I mean, right. that was a big part of it, being a part of it, seeing some of the famous poker players, right. that kind of thing. And lastly, Mike, you won't be there if I play again, yeah. probably. Maybe. And that was a big part, having you there. I didn't realize it, because originally I was just going to go whether you could make it or not. Right. But it was great having you yeah. there, you know. Oh, yeah. It's nice to have someone yeah. bring you stuff, too. <laughs> right. Yeah, bringing me, me candy and bring, stuff. He's and bring that. me this or bring me that. Yeah. So on that note, I might reconsider playing again. Adam Bauer, I think, on Twitter was the one who suggested that a bunch of us kind of meet up there and all play in one tournament together. Yeah. You know, like maybe the $500 buy-in, you know, no limit hold'em. In that situation, when I'm with a group of people and we're kind of all sharing that experience, that would be good. Then I might do it. But I don't think I'd be going back just to play in this tournament in particular, right? um, just to do it again. So yeah, we'll see. Well, and you're not really a poker guy. I mean, you're good at poker. You play, we play tons of poker over our life, but it's not your game, right? I mean, I, well, I I don't know if I can completely agree with you because I mean, I do take it pretty seriously. Right. No, 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 not that being said. It's just that it's not the game that gives you the most enjoyment. Uh, okay. Yeah, sure. I guess I'll go with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd rather be like, you know, when we were talking about playing this MIDI Bakra, you know, in Biloxi, right. right? I certainly had more fun with my friends. There, there, right? Then I'd have playing poker, poker with, with my strangers. Friends. Yeah, well, 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 with even with my friends, right? Yeah. You know, so well when I played in casinos on a poker table without anyone I know, just you know, against other people, yeah. it's not that much fun for me. Really. I understand. Sure. I mean, yeah, I'm competitive and I want to win and I'm paying attention, but after a while, it's like, oh, well, this isn't that much fun. Yeah, the it's only, like work. <laughs> yeah, the, well, okay, there you go. Yeah, the, it's like work. The, the fun that you get out of it is winning pots, obviously. Right. And playing well. And maybe that isn't fun to you, yeah, right? You know, right. maybe it is like that is work. work. That's right? like so, work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Overall, though, again, I have to say, fantastic experience, experience playing yeah. in the WSOP. It yeah, seemed so. very well organized. At I least thought so. From my standpoint, mm-hmm. standing yep. there and watching yep. everything, yep. it was fun. It was interesting. Oh, and just the energy behind it, too. I yeah. love that. You right. know, it was just a huge event, right? You know, right. everything going on. So, yeah, I definitely like that. 
So I was out that first day, so that means we had plenty of time to <laughs> do other things in Las Vegas, <laughs> right. such as gamble. So let's go through the list that I've got here, Mike. One of the first things we did when we woke up that first morning after I was eliminated, we walked by the Kino Lounge. Right. And we kind of looked at each other like, Kino, it's here. Yeah. Let's do this. There's a lounge for it, too. You <laughs> That's know? right. And we decided, you know, when we pass something like a Kino lounge, we need to say yes. We need to say yes, yes. to more things in our yeah. lives. Right. So when there's a Kino lounge, yes, let's yeah, play Kino. Let's play Kino. Why not? <laughs> well, I was talking to the lady who was there every morning, the morning shift she yeah. had. She was telling me that, yeah, we're pretty busy. I was asking her, you know, about Kino. She yeah. said, yeah, we're pretty busy here because we're really the only lounge around. So we do get a lot of people... You know, just sitting here playing Kino yeah, during the I'm day. I'm trying to stuff. think of other places on the Strip, or gosh, in Vegas at all. At all. That, that I has can't think Kino. of any. Yeah, it's really, we've talked about how it's a dying game. But yeah. Yeah, maybe they are getting all the Kino action on the Strip. The strip yeah, the and last. there's not a lot of a lounge there. There's, no, you know, it's, a, it's small. It's silly to call it a lounge. lounge but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's fun. You know, there were a lot of people throughout the day when I would go up to the room back and forth, I'd see people sitting there playing Kino. And it was right by our bank of elevators. Right. So, you know, we couldn't avoid it. Oh, you have to walk right by right. it. Right. And the best thing is Kino play overnight That's, and yep. you're sleeping and you've got gambling going on. We, <laughs> so, so in essence, we never stopped gambling when we were there. Oh yeah. That's a good point. We always had a live Kino. We ticket. always that's had right. a live yeah, Kino ticket right. going. <laughs> I played a couple overnight. Now I played a hundred games right. overnight over the period of two nights yeah. of four spot. Right. Right. And I won both of them. I yes. think I cashed out for like 135 one night and 160 the next night. Right. Now you were kind of a, yeah, because you just bet like forty dollars right. or something 20 like that, once right? Twenty once and so. forty once, yeah. <laughs> and you know what? When we were leaving, I stopped and got one of the Kino booklets that has all the payouts right, and right. different bets you can make. And I've been studying that all week because you have, I, yeah. I was very disappointed in myself. Yeah, my Kino play was, you know, I got a little bit back out of every ticket. Fifteen dollars, sixteen dollars, yeah. stuff like that, but no big hits. Oh, I won and overall. Yeah, for Kino, you yeah. won overall. <laughs> well, I'm up overall for my life. For All Kino. right, I'll give you that. You've hit yeah. a lot of zero Zeros, spots yeah. or yeah. twenty spots, I guess yeah. is what it is. Right. Uh, when you fill out twenty, 20 spots, and I've got that's zero. right, twenty spots, and you get zero. Right. right yeah, right. I've, I've hit a lot of those. Yeah. So I'm up overall, but my Kino play this trip was bad. Now yeah. m- maybe it's health related. You know, yeah, maybe I'm just be. off my game. Sure, that but could be. You beating me at Kino, I'm studying all week. The next time we go, I'm ready. <laughs> Okay, good. Oh. And who knows, you know, in Minnesota, I don't know if they've got any kind of keynote at any right. of the... Well, some of the lotteries do, too. I guess right. you could play those. All right. <laughs> Practicing up. Pra- yeah, practice for real keynote. Keno, right. I want to play real keynote. Keno, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good bet. Let's talk about craps, of course, because we played a lot. One thing I noticed this trip, and maybe this is spreading throughout the country, almost all the craps tables we saw... The center action, the area with the center action, it was kind of indented or it, it was like a, you could tell it was hollowed out yeah. below it so that the table wasn't level all the way across. I guess they've uh-huh. kind of incorporated that to prevent dice sliding. Dice sliding, right? Right, yeah. right. They had little bumps on the edges and then it kind of dipped down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So it would be hard to slide dice over that. Yeah. All the strip casinos we went to, all, all of, them, of them, had at least one crapless craps. Yeah, some places had two. Yeah. Every single one. I've never right. seen that before. Right. We went downtown. Some of the downtown ones didn't have it. But every strip casino had crapless craps. And it makes me worried because I said on a recent episode, you know, is this the six New to five thing? blackjack? Is this the triple zero sure. roulette, right? right? Is this what's creeping in? We'll have to search for a real craps table. <laughs> That's it's like, right. oh, we got to play crapless craps. Yeah. We saw only one roll to win table. While we were yes. there, I'm trying to remember where it was, and I can't remember, Mike. But remember, it seemed like they were taking over, and it's like this is the future. Right. But there have been so many scandals about it, dice sliding. Recently, here there was an article about a dealer who was, you know, intentionally putting in the wrong rolls, rolls right. so that people could win. You know, in uh, so I'm thinking it. We saw it on the strip. If I, I remember think so correctly. too. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. only one. Right. You know, the whole time one roll to win. We saw a lot of uh, bubble craps. Yes, plenty, seen, of bubble seen, craps, like plenty of bubble craps. Not just the shoot to win, but also those individual, individual bubble craps machines. Right. You know, yeah, right. mm-hmm. yeah. Yep, a lot you had that. a good story about one of those. 
Oh, yeah, this is kind of stupid. I So uh, Mike went up to the room to go get something. I thought, well, I'll play one of these individual machines. Machine, right. And you know what I'll do? I'll put in 20 bucks and I'll start betting. But then I've got a b- bunch of ones on me. I could just take them up to the cashier and have them change you know, yeah, to some right. higher bills. But there was a big line. So I thought, well, I'm just going to keep feeding the machine ones right. you know, as I continue to play. <laughs> well, finally the machine... Like some old lady yeah. from <laughs> Nebraska who <laughs> you know, gets to the casino once every five years. <laughs> Yeah, finally, uh, I tilted the machine. Yeah, and the hopper got too many bills in it. Oh, what? And so they're all, yeah, they, somebody had to come over and they couldn't fix it. And so finally, I had to wait there a while. Yeah. Finally, they had to walk away and then come back with cash to give me, they couldn't even cash out yeah, the machine. machine. Right? I, I'm give me a sitting ticket. there, why are we waiting? And then we had to wait for the guy to come over. He's probably thinking, yeah, some idiot crammed a bunch of ones in here. He didn't know. Yeah. As far as he knew, I had just gotten to the yeah, machine. Yeah, right. And put oh, in he a doesn't 20. know it's you. He's just thinking some. <laughs> <laughs> some old lady crammed a bunch of ones in there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, we played at Caesars Properties a lot, obviously, since we were staying at Bally's and you know they're all around that area. Almost every place had the fire bet and the all tall small. Yes. Pretty much every all the table. Caesars properties. Yeah. I think the only exception was on crapless craps, we saw the repeater. Yeah, right. right. That one crap but, right. several but, crapless had But the other, repeater. otherwise, fire bet and the all tall small. Every all tall small that we saw in Vegas had the lower payouts, you know, right. the 30 the, to 1 and the 150, the 150 to, one, to 1, as opposed to the 34 to 1 and the 175 to 1. So right. that's too bad, but, you know, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the what way it is. What could you do? They have changed the payout on the fire bet at Caesars Properties yes. also to emphasize the four points hit. Hitting. So at Caesars now, when you get four points, it pays 40 for one in, instead of 25, 25 for, for one. one. And what they've done is they've taken some of the odds from the higher payout. So the five points only pays 200 for one instead of 250 for one. Well, I'm not thrilled about that for five and six. I do like getting paid more on the four, which you hit more yes. of. But that five, and the five's not too bad. The six is one well, that the bothered six, me. The six, they've dropped down to 500 for one. Yeah, that's half of, of what is what was before. Right, right. Yeah, that's a huge drop. I understand that. I definitely prefer this situation for the reason you said, right? You're going to yeah. hit four a lot more. Right. However, under this new payout, the house edge is 23.9% instead of the 20.8% that the traditional payouts have. Now, they're both yeah. horrible, so right. I don't want to you know, make it sound like it's you know an outrage or anything. If but. you were playing every day, if you were a person who lived in Vegas, and we'll talk about a guy later who we met, mm-hmm. but if you do live there every day and you were going, you would love that four payout, right? Because you're going to yeah. get a lot more yeah. of those. Yeah. As a person who's coming for a weekend, you're just hoping to hit five or six, right? And get a big yeah. payoff. Maybe. I said to one guy who's standing next to me, oh, you know, it's, it's only... 500 to one. And he said, Oh, you still get $5,000 for your $10 bet. And 10 was the max. <laughs> right. Yeah. 10, yeah was the max. 10 was the max. And I said, yeah, but you should be getting 10,000. You know, I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't know, Mike, I might argue the other way yeah. and say that, you know, the guy who lives there was hoping for was more hoping to get hits. more because he's eventually going to hit it. Right. He yeah, goes so often. Eventually. Whereas the guy just from, you know, out of town, he's probably not going to hit the six while he's there, but he might hit a four, right? Yeah, so, I guess. I don't know. He just seems to me I'm always hoping for the big one, right? Yeah, right. I love it when four hits, of yeah, course, right. because <laughs> then you have a chance for five or six, yeah. but I'm always hoping for the six. Yeah, yeah. So that's craps. We got a, another story about craps coming up. We'll save towards the end here. Some funny things that happened. There was a light in our room kind of by the desk. <laughs> I brought my laptop so I could do some work while I was there, and I kind of like to have a, a light on next to it. We couldn't figure out how to turn this thing on. There was no switch. We thought it might be touch sensitive, like yeah. those ones where you just touch it yeah. and it turns on. We're looking everywhere. There Mark's is no looking switch. all over. I'm laying on the bed, not feeling well, kind of nauseated, and I'm thinking to myself, he's an idiot. There's a switch There's on there. Be a switch. There's got to be a switch. But you on came a light. over. There was and then no I switch. came over. I searched that thing over good, and I could not find a switch. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, what's going on? So I think you finally went back and, and lay down again, and uh-huh. I looked, was kind of looking around. And, oh, here, I found the problem, Mike. You just got to plug it in. <laughs> and the so, funny thing is you plugged it in, and it came right on. Yeah, it's And like, then we're like, what the hell? You mean you turn it off, you got to unplug it? That's the only plug- way to turn <laughs> it off? 
<laughs> and of course, you know, the final joke's on us. That turns out the outlet that it was plugged into was also tied to the switch right by the door. By the door. So when you <laughs> so, walk in the door, it turns on the light right above the door and it turns on that light. That light, which, which is, is on the far, far end, end of the, of the room. room. Right. So we're thinking maybe like the previous people that were in there liked having that light on by the door. But right. then couldn't sleep with the light. So they just unplugged so it. So they right? just unplugged it. Yeah, that's probably what happened. But at first we were like, what the hell? I've never... <laughs> you got you to gotta plug them in. We're idiots. <laughs> that, I, that's the point of this story. We're just trying to let you know yeah. that we're idiots. Okay? Well, I think that's at a- one point in a kind of a hazy <laughs> mind I was in, I suggested, you know... First thing you do is turn it off and on. Second thing you do is check and make sure it's plugged in. That's right. <laughs> That's good for any, any device. Any that device, you're right? Yep, yep. <laughs> we did run into Spike from two morons talking about casinos and stuff. You right. Know, Spike yeah, he and happened T-Bag. to be the pit. At- he happened to be there, and we. I asked him, "Hey, you know, how come you haven't done an episode in a while?" And he was kind of laughing, and said, I guess he's putting in like a music studio or something in his, in his house, house, and yeah. so that he's was been a lot work, of it. Spending all of his time working, on right? That. And then plus, T Bag doesn't work at the same property as him anymore. But right. uh, it was good running into him. So watch for an episode from them. Who knows? Coming it's up, several yeah. months, something like that. We did kind of take interest of a, a kid. I say kid, you know. Anytime we're dealing with somebody in their twenties, yeah, we're gonna say it's kid. funny. Everyone under like about forty, I say the kid, <laughs> it's right. like like the old man. <laughs> so yeah. he was playing Don't Pass, and we were trying to figure out exactly his system because it looked like he was bagging with odds, but putting it in the wrong place. Finally, we we realized what he was doing. He had say a fifty dollar. Don't pass bet. Right. And if the point came up as five, six, eight, or nine, he would make a place bet for $50 on the point. Right. So in essence, what would happen is if a seven was rolled, he'd win his don't pass and he'd lose the place bet for just no profit, no loss. Right. But if the point was rolled... He'd lose the don't pass bet, but he'd get the place payout for his place bet. Right. Right. So basically what he was hoping for when the point was five, six, eight, or nine was for the player to actually make the point. Right. Right. He'd right. win a little he, he bit of money. He'd win a little bit of money. Now, if the point was four or ten, he would back the don't pass with full odds. He yeah, would he lay would lay full, full odds. odds. Right. 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 And then assuming that, you know, seven's gonna come up before a four or a ten is the point, and then he makes a big killing. If the point comes up though, he takes a bath. Yes, that's, he loses that, quite so a bit that's of money. his worst scenario is when the point's point, four or ten and it's made. And it's made. Right. Also he had to fade seven eleven on the come out roll, right? You right. know, of course. And then he would win on two and three. Now we thought, you know, once we realized what he's doing, it's like, okay, not a bad system if you don't mind playing that way. It's sort of yeah. a slow burn. Well, kind of thing where you win a little, win a little, win a little, and then you can lose a lot, lot on one, right? right? You and know, as we talked to him, he realized all that. Yeah. And he said, yeah, it's kind of boring, but you can play a long time. Yeah. And if things go your way, you can do pretty good. Right. You know, a bunch of fours are made as points and nobody makes them. Right, yeah, You're, exactly. you're doing great. Yeah. But- well, as we were playing... He it was very disciplined, seemed to be very disciplined initially. Right, but right. then he lost a couple of bets and it seemed like he went on tilt. Yeah, a couple me. of fours or tens were made. Yeah. And yeah, he definitely went on tilt. Because then suddenly he was making bets that he wouldn't before. Like he was right. suddenly placing the six and eight when the point was four, you know, and right. it's like hoping for the uh, and so it was like, okay, he's not staying disciplined. Not that's a winning system, you know, it's not. But generally when you're doing something like that, you don't want to second guess yourself. And then turn out to be wrong, you know, when you're making right. these extra bets. So you kind of have to have a tough skin to play that. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. you know, you put so much out there on a four. He's taking full odds too. It's yeah. not like he's taking half odds or something or laying half odds. Yeah. He's laying full odds. And so, you know, a couple of those come up and all of a sudden your stack is devastated, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's what happened to him. And then he kind of lost it. But I was. Intrigued. It's not a bad way to play. Yeah, not too bad. If yeah. you were going to be a person who went to the casino like every day. Yeah, you do see a lot of don't players who maybe go every day. They, and yeah. they're generally conservative. Well, when I say conservative, some don't players like having their whole bankroll out there, right. you know, at once on different numbers. And, you know, but yeah. Well, our friend Firebet Phil from Harris, Southern California met us in Vegas. He actually drove out the day after, after we arrived. So we spent a lot of time with him going to different places. One of the new places we went to was Resorts World, where neither you nor I had been to. Right. 
And we really liked that place, didn't we? Yes, I, yeah. I liked it. Very much. Now, obviously, we didn't tour the whole facility. We didn't stay there. Right. And I think a lot of people say, oh, yeah, it's very nice, but that's it. Yeah. Right? Like, maybe it's cold, you know, or it's yeah, just... I didn't feel that way. We really loved where the craps tables were located, because right. right by this major thoroughfare of people walking by. Right. So it's great for people watching. You yes. Know? Yeah. Uh-huh. And there was lots of room there. Lots it of room. It kind of reminded mm-hmm. me a little bit of like Bellagio. A little bit. Uh-huh. Yep. There's lots of mm-hmm. room, yep. and but you can still see everything right. going, on. going on. Yep. Uh, definitely. Yeah. And it was a good right. crew, too. Yeah. We, very very good, crew. good crew. Yeah. So we had a good time there. That was where one of the dealers was fairly young. Mm-hmm. I'd say <laughs> yeah. like... Oh, mid twenties or late twenties, right? And every girl that walked by, and there were quite a few. I say right? every every woman who yeah, walked yeah. by. Every, okay, Mike. Uh, okay, every yeah, woman, every who, walked woman by. who walked mm-hmm. by. Yeah, he would say something like "Hi," or you know, I mean, nothing rude. Just he would make eye contact and say yeah, something. Yeah, it wasn't. To yeah, he wasn't. You know, whistling it or no, anything. no. Just, he'd just yeah. say hi or yeah, you know, right. hey, welcome to resorts or whatever. Anyway, at one point we're standing there and a woman walks by. Who's probably my age. Yeah, probably your age. Yeah. Yeah. Uh And he said something to her like, hi, how's it going? And she just stopped, stared at him and said, I could be your mother. (laughs) (laughs) All the younger women just kind of like looked and smiled. (laughs) She stopped and said, I could be your mother. (laughs) And then she walked on and and we turned to him and said, you should have just said, yeah. So thumbs up to Resorts World. Yeah, they, uh, they were good crew. Yeah, too, I agree, yeah. yeah. And oh, you know, people have talked about, hey, parking at Resorts World, there's two places you can park, right? right there's the yeah. self-parking that's, you know, all, hey, park here. But then there's hotel parking. It's actually labeled hotel, hotel parking. parking. That's very close to the hotel and casino. So park yeah. there if you can. You may have to drive a little further depending on which direction you're coming from, to get to that parking garage. But then it's much but faster But that dumps you out in. right so, in the casino. Yes, yeah. The other, the guest parking structure, you've got a long But you got walk. a walk in yeah. outside. you got to walk yeah. outside to get right. to the casino, right? Yeah. And Mark had dropped me off so I wouldn't have to walk so much. Yeah. And then we asked the valet attendant, and he said, yeah, don't park in that one yeah. over there. Just <laughs> make a ride up here and go around the other side and park in hotel parking. Yeah. So yeah. coming back... I even went walked with you to the car. It was very oh, it? yeah, it and I like, got a great parking spot yeah, right yeah, off right. the elevator there too. So, and then we went downtown. You had not been to Circa. What did you think of Circa? I like Circa a lot too. Yeah, yeah I knew you I, would. I, I thought liked you'd really enjoy playing like, there. Yeah, they, well, where the craps table was again were excellent. Yeah, mm-hmm. there was plenty of room around them. Yep. You weren't crowded up against a wall or anything yep. or anything. They were very nice. They had lots of tables open yep. when we and were there. The Padres game was on. We watched yeah, it. Yeah, there's you know, right lots there. of yeah. TVs. Mm-hmm. Yep. Lots of yep. TVs. We were looking right into the sports book yep. so we could see the Padre game on the huge screen and right. then off to the sides there were smaller screens yep. we were watching it. Yep. Yeah, I thought that was very yeah, nice. I thought, yeah, I figured you'd like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I like Circa a lot. Yeah, good. I, I think it's, in my opinion, the best thing downtown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we went over to Golden Gate real quick because we thought we might have some free play. Well, you did, in and fact. It, it, I did. I had 75 in free play. Now, the way they do it for table games, it's like, okay, here's your $75 voucher. Right. You can't break it up into smaller pieces. Yeah, it's you got to like, play it all at once. Whatever. So I said, well, okay, let's just go to blackjack. I'll just play one hand of blackjack. So, you know, I put 75 down. I wanted to make sure, was it okay to play here? And yeah, yeah. there was another guy. He was just one other guy at the table, and he said something like, oh, good. Maybe this will change the luck of the table or whatever. So we get dealt our hands. The guy at the table, he got dealt a 20. So yeah. he's happy with that. I got dealt blackjack. Nice. And they did pay the three to two. Yes. You know, even though it's, you know, this free play right, voucher. Right, right. So that was nice. Turn that into, and and they took the voucher. So really right. the value of the voucher was only half of $75, right? right? Since, you know, right. it was when they Since took they take it. So I got $112.50 you know, yeah. out of that. Nice. So, uh, yeah, not bad. We did end up going to Mohegan Sun, you know, at the Virgin Hotels. We were right. trying to figure out, oh, where should we go that we hadn't been? We, th- we were thinking maybe should we go to Palms? But we thought, no, let's go to Mohegan Sun because that has really changed, yeah. right? You know, complete. The, I'm kind of sad we didn't go to Palms because yeah. I, I did want to kind of go in there and see. But it's a little bit of a drive. Not that Virgin wasn't either, but we just never, yeah, we were winging things. We, yeah, we, yeah, and, we did uh, not have anything right. planned. So I'm glad we went there just to say we went there, but there's right. some funny things about yeah. Mohegan Sun. First of all, when you pull up, you see where the parking garage is, and you see where the entrance to like the hotel is, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, that's so far away. Yeah, it looks like a half a mile walk <laughs> or something. So I drove to the you know entrance to the hotel, right? and I was thinking, well, 
you know, maybe I should drop you off. And it's like, yeah, uh, we, I, I thought I, maybe there'd be parking. There. I'm saying valet it or something. And then I hate it, valeting. So yeah, I, I know you to, do. Know and and yeah. I'm saying valet because I'm thinking I'm not walking from right. that parking structure. But then <laughs> finally, we, then just, we just said, oh, go, we'll, we'll just, we'll go, just park. go. Let's just go yeah. park. Yeah. And so you went around the corner, you yeah. pulled into the parking structure, you parked, got a pretty decent yeah, spot. It was okay, yeah. And then, you know, as we're going down the elevator, I said, yeah, like, watch. We're either going to have to walk like a half a mile or we're just going to dump us out into the casino. <laughs> right. And you said something like, yeah, we'll probably just dump us out and there will be the cashier and, the, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Sure enough. <laughs> dump us out. <laughs> There's the cashier. <laughs> we, we step out of the thing and you can immediately see the cashier. It's right there. Yeah. So we got fooled by, you know, where the casino, casino actually yeah, was. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> So we played a Mohegan Sun a lot. There's been a lot of talk about how dead it is. It was okay when we were there, like we were on there, a Sunday night or yeah, something. Yeah, like it was kind of later. It, <laughs> I guess, the table game area had a certain amount of clientele, but yeah, I can see where people were saying it was dead. Yeah, it was a weird experience. Playing a very at weird Sun, experience, right? Yeah. First of all, it was a lower table. Yeah. Didn't you notice that? Oh, right? much, it was lower. much lower. Much lower. Than, yeah. Than normal. We got there, and Dr. Mike, you asked for a chair. P- yeah. The casinos have been very accommodating to you the whole time very, we were there. Mo- all of them were very It was good. just hard for you to stand uh, for any amount I, of time. Yeah, I couldn't stand for more than a few minutes, so they they all brought me chairs. Right. Yeah. But when we went to Mohegan Sun, you buy in, I'm standing there. I said, can I get a chair? No. Yeah, it was like, well, you know, our policy is, you know, yeah. we don't have chairs. The guy said, our policy is no chairs at the it's tables. Like, uh, okay. And I just, you know, I, I said something like, well, you know, I've got some issues and I took some medicine and I'm, uh, okay, well, I'll see what I can do. Yeah. So they ran it up the yeah. chain. chain yeah. Eventually did get you a chair, yeah. but it was like this big, you know, yeah. to do. It's big so. to do to bring me yeah. a chair so from an empty blackjack table that was right. a few feet away. Right. Something else we found kind of strange. So we waited for the come out roll. To buy in. Yeah. You know, can we like to have good craps etiquette? So we throw our money down and they start taking it up. And the stick person sends the dice. Right. So the whole point to kind of buying in during the come out roll is not to slow There's time. You know, but no, she got the dice out. So, you know, the come out roll was done before we even got our chips. Right. So I guess that's their policy. Don't stop the game when somebody's buying in. Right. You know? Okay, that's fine, I guess. Funny thing is, too, they didn't ask us for um, players' cards. Not at all. They, or oh, ID or anything. Nothing. nothing. Especially with, you know, Mike's buying in for, I don't know, $2,000 or something like that, and everybody else is playing with, you know, nickels and that kind of thing. Yeah. Nothing. You'd think they'd you'd jump on you. and Right. So, okay, fine. <laughs> you know, whatever. We did have fun, though, because there were some kids yeah. <laughs> in their 20s. Like three of them looked like maybe a married couple and then a friend, friend uh, playing. Right. And they were learning the game. Yeah. And, you know, they were drinking. They were having a lot of fun. They, and, they were very fun. They yeah, were, they were they great. Were, yes. They were very uh-huh. friendly and yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. So we're teaching them the game and odds and this kind of thing. And so we had a very good time with them. And they're actually picking it up. Oh, yeah. Too. They yes. were a little tipsy, but they were picking it up quickly. Definitely, they, they, yeah. They so knew what they were It doing. was fun. They yeah. knew what they wanted to do. do and, right. And you know, we were kind of helping them out with the exact amounts, now, so, you know, to get the bet. Right. Day. At one point, one of them said, though, boy, you know, blackjack players are real jerks. <laughs> yeah. They had come from some blackjack table, table right. where, you know, somebody there did Probably like some the, guy giving them a hard time who was playing like first base. Yeah, and, or something. And they you know. made some move on third base that maybe wasn't kosher yeah. or something. Or And this gets back to what we were talking about and right. why a lot of people in this community don't like blackjack right. like maybe they used to because of players giving you a hard time, being angry at right. the way you played because you and took the dealer's bus card or and whatever. And verbalizing right? it. Oh, yeah. Not just sitting there and thinking, yes. oh, he shouldn't have done Insulting that. No, they're you. verbalizing yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's a shame because yeah. blackjack is a good game, but in reality, yeah, you get people on the table who it's just a negativity and it makes it no fun. <laughs> Funny thing is, is they're, they're jovial and they're talking to us. They're complaining about blackjack players and the dice get slid to the guy and Mark said, now shut up and roll. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so we did have fun there, but it was one of those experiences where, well, we don't plan to go back to Mohegan Sun Casino. No, yeah, there no, is. No, I'd have no reason no, to go there. No, so. no, and it, it's just a weird vibe in there. Yeah, yeah. It was odd. Yeah, yeah. We saw a lot of listeners while we were there. Uh, birthday boy Andy, he just happened to be there that weekend, so he came down and played some craps with us at Bally's. 
Eric Anderson, who we see on many trips, yes. he was there. Yeah. Poor Eric, he said he was having the like the worst trip of his life. I he was know. between craps and slot machines. Yeah, so. I felt bad for him because he just nothing was going. Yeah, his Eric, way. hopefully, I hope it he hit improved something at the at, end, yeah, after yeah. we yeah. saw you. Our friend Bill from Canada, yeah, he met Bill. up with you, and in fact was uh, he played he, at the WSOP. Uh, you know, I came right. over and talked yeah. to you guys for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he found played us some there. craps with you. This was kind of funny. We were downtown at Golden Gate. And I think you were off using the restroom, and Phil was at a craps table. I went up to Phil, and I said, you know, yeah. Phil, after this, I think we're going to go down to the strip. I'm just filling him in. You know, I'm yeah, not playing or anything. Do. And this guy next to me said, oh, hey, I just want to say I really enjoy your show. And I said, oh, uh, hi. He said, uh, yeah, my name's Brad. I recognize you from your voice. Oh, wow. So here's a situation where, right. okay, maybe Brad knew we were in town, but we certainly didn't say we were going downtown no. to the Golden Gate. No. And he just recognized my <laughs> voice talking to Phil. And, oh, I just want to tell you, really. So that was. And he was well, gone by the time I got back. Yeah, he you didn't get to meet him. But, no. you know, it's, it's such a bizarre experience, you know, to hear that <laughs> somebody recognized you by your voice, you know, right. only. Yeah, he recognized you, and he said, I guess Dr. Mike's in the restroom. And I said, yep. Yeah, that's always a good assumption <laughs> yeah, uh, there, good Brad. Assumption. Nice to meet you. <laughs> but we also ran into listeners Trevor and Kim at Circa. Right. right? And I think they had been following us on Twitter, but we hadn't said we were going, going down downtown. there yeah. and just recognized you because of the photo I posted yeah, on Twitter right. of you buying your you know important your breakfast. breakfast items right there. <laughs> It's funny because they were staying on the strip. Yeah, they just and they yeah. just came down to see Circa at the yeah, same time we yeah. came to see yeah. Circa. So that was good, and they both had pretty good roles too. I think, right? Yeah, they you kept, <laughs> you kept track of them. I kept track of their roles. I can read them off, but they had pretty good roles. Yeah, and then uh, how many times did he roll the dice off the table? Trevor rolled the dice off fifteen times. Fifteen times. Yeah, and then he wanted to make sure that if we mentioned that on the show, <laughs> that you and I both immediately sevened out yeah, when the when, dice when got it to came us, to right? us. Hey, yeah. I don't know what it is about those Circa tables, but we also... So, threw them off threw, a lot. They bounce so much. much I yeah. have never seen the dice go off the table as much as I have at Circa. Yeah, they went off a lot. It was yeah. funny. He had a great role. Yeah. <laughs> it just said, in between all these great numbers coming up was uh, these ones going off. Yeah. And we were laughing about that. Yeah. So you didn't see any nudity on this trip. No, no. I did not. And but it's unfortunate. It is too bad. But I did. Yeah, Mark saw nudity. So I was walking, I think it was during one of my breaks, during the WSOP, and I'm walking back, and a couple of women are walking towards me in short dresses. Obviously, like, getting ready to go to the club in short right. dresses. And one woman's dress just had hiked up just a little too high. She didn't have anything else on. <laughs> she pulled it down, you know, as yeah. she was walking. But I got my nudity for uh, for the trip, so the trip. I guess nice. that counts. Yeah, yeah. That, oh, that definitely counts. <laughs> <laughs> you had to rub it in the whole time, too. That's right. <laughs> We did have a, a few good meals, too, while we were there. Yes. We decided, let's yeah. have a good meal while we are there. You know, this might be kind of the last trip for you and me for a while. So we ate dinner at Gordon Ramsay's Steak, you, me, and Phil. Right. And it was nice. We went over just at 4.30. Let's see if we can get a table or a reservation. And they were able to seat us right away. That yes. was great. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They, they were great. She yeah. said, well, maybe I can seat you at the bar. Yeah. And we're thinking, okay, we'll sit there. Fine, yeah. But, you know, then you're not looking at each other you're looking into the bar right and then uh she came back she says no i've got a table for you yeah and you know she sat at us at a really nice yeah, table it was, it was terrific and we yeah. all had a great meal i had the beef wellington which i've never had before right and it's like his specialty there so yeah. that was excellent you had a filet how I was had a that? filet it was excellent yeah. yeah it was it was actually more than i could eat yeah i love that when i get more than i can eat yeah and Phil had a rack of lamb that he just was over the world well, was yeah. about. So, yeah, yeah, excellent meal there. And then for lunch one day, you and I ate at Bobby's Burgers, which is like Bobby, Bobby Flay, Flay Burgers. Burgers. It's just on that you know stretch in Paris there. I thought it was funny. There was a bit of a line when we got there, and the guy in front of me, he's looking, and he turns to me to walk away. Right. And he said, $34 for a burger. That's crazy. Right. And he walked away, and I'm looking, I'm thinking, 30 Huh. The ones, they were $14 burgers, right. which is expensive. It's, as it's, I mean, it's right. too expensive either. Right. But the ones kind of looked like threes. If you yeah. were nearsighted, yeah. didn't have your glasses on, kind of. And so this guy saw $34 <laughs> <dollar> burger. <laughs> That's crazy. The rest of his life, who would pay $34 He's for a burger? He's going home telling. Meanwhile, we got, you know, we moved up in the line <laughs> well, one yeah, uh, right. person, so that helped. <laughs> <laughs> they were okay. I'm oh, not, they were fine. Yeah. They weren't worth the price. He no. puts uh, one of the things is he puts potato chips on. Right, right? The you burgers. had one with potato. Right. Chips. I had one with potato chips, and I liked it. Yeah, I liked I had that. The I liked barbecue it on there, so. burger. Yeah, and that was good too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the burger was fine. I, 
you know, would I go there again? Eh. No, you know, there was a line. There was a line. I wouldn't wait in that line again. It was part of Caesar's. We were able to, you know, yeah, comp it. So, you know, yeah. that's in that case, maybe if I'm looking for something relatively fast and I don't want to, you know, walk over right. to the link or whatever, you know, I might do it. Yeah. I think the rest of our food consisted of snacks. Oh, and, yeah. And, yeah, we got a lot of snacks from the, yeah. And stuff like just quick sandwich here yeah, and there. Yeah. You ate a tuna fish sandwich at like three in the morning. Yeah, from, from the gift shop. From the gift right? shop. So, you know, I, you, I took a chance. And I think it was the night before my tournament, too. So you're I, a very I lucky a person. <laughs> <laughs> You're a very lucky person. And you didn't get sick at all. I was sick the whole trip. Oh, you I were know. fine. I felt so bad for you, Mike. Gosh. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm spending more time in the bathroom than, <laughs> than actually in the casino. And, and you eat a, a tuna fish. Of all things, tuna fish. I know. Fish. It's not like you know, turkey, okay, maybe. Yeah. Tuna fish, you know, there's, yeah, they've added a lot yeah. of... The, is the mayo, has that gone bad? Is it really fish? You should have just eaten raw pork. <laughs> right? I mean, Take a chance. Or, <laughs> Take a hey, chance. I'm a gambler. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the best part of the story. We were having a terrible trip. Talk about yes. Eric. I mean, we were losing everywhere we played. Right. I was. I don't think I had a winning session till maybe Sunday, where I won like a hundred dollars or something. I mean, it yeah. was bad. bad. Yeah, and Mark was funding me a little, so yeah, I could play. Right. Yeah, that wasn't going good either. So we were trying to decide what we should do. We figured let's go somewhere else. And I said, well, let's go over to Bellagio. Yes, that was your idea. We like playing there. It's relatively close. Right. I didn't want to get in the car and have to go somewhere else. You know, let's just, let's go over there. So we went over. And at first, we were going to play at this empty table, but it was crapless. Yeah. Crapless crafts crapless right at crafts. the end there. All right. Even at Bellagio. We got on this table, played for a little bit. I don't know. It was going okay. Didn't really like the vibe. And by vibe, we meant like the people playing. Yeah. It was just they were kind of holding up the game. It's not like we think sevens are more likely to come. It's just we weren't enjoying it. Yeah, we weren't enjoying it. The crew was fine. The crew was fine. They're fast at Bellagio. Oh, my gosh. They were so good. They were so good. They keep that game moving, and I love that. The best dealers of the whole trip were at Bellagio. Right. By far. By far. Yes. So we said, well, Mike, let's change tables. There was an empty one right behind us, so let's change tables here. So we right. got on this table. And it was going okay for a little while. I don't well, know. Well, the beginning, so. it was just you and I, and yeah. then two women came up and mm-hmm. played. Yeah. So then a yeah. couple more people came. Yeah. When we left the table, it was full. Yes, yes. Yeah. But as we're starting to play, this guy comes up to the table, and we're trying to size him up. And he's got some big money chips yeah. with him already. Right. Like, I don't know, Mike, $30,000 Probably around chips, that. Something yeah, like something that. Something like that. And he had a water bottle with him, and he walked into the pit and put his water bottle like on their stand there, their pit right. stand. And we're thinking, and I think it what? looked kind of like a bottle of whiskey. It did kind of, yeah. It, you know, it, was, <laughs> it, was it wasn't shaped, shaped like a water bottle. It looked like a whiskey. And I'm thinking, yeah. and he's holding it like you know he's some hobo who's been drinking whiskey, <laughs> right? And he wasn't dressed great. No, I mean, and you know, so, just very but he casual. Had tons of, so we're trying to think. Yeah. Okay, is he like an eccentric? Yeah, you know, right. rich guy or something. Right. And we watch him start to play, and he's playing with quarters it was a 25 dollar table right. he's making minimum bets he's betting like we were minimum bets yeah you know and 30 dollars on the six yeah, and eight and yeah he's got, and he's like, got thirty thousand dollars in front of him as we're continuing to play we find out his name is jeff he's a regular he's a local he lives there right and a, just a super nice guy yeah he you know once he, we started you know kind of talking to he him he was and great and he told me he plays four days a week yep and he comes in and plays for a few hours. If he hits it big, he goes home. If he yep. loses, he may stay a little longer. Yep. But that's his routine. Yep. And, and they all knew him. They all you know? knew him. He yeah. bets for the dealers. Right. He bets for the and dealers. And it just turns out he's a guy with a huge bankroll who plays the minimums right. at Bellagio because that's what he, he enjoys. He plays oh like God. a low roller so with a huge smart. bankroll. Yeah. So smart. Yeah. And he enjoyed himself. Oh, my oh, gosh. Yeah. No, he, he, you know, he'd have... Five dollars on the hard way, and it would hit, and he's like, "Whoa!" I mean, he yeah. was ecstatic. Yeah. He was ecstatic when a five dollar hard eight hit, and then he pressed it to ten. He didn't yeah, go right. like, yeah. "Oh, leave it all," you know, parlay the whole thing. No, he pressed it he, to ten. So it was just so fun watching him. Play. Yes, he was excellent. And then you got the dice, my friend. Yes, what happened? 
Well, I had the biggest role I've ever had in my life. <laughs> he had okay. the biggest role at the end. And, yeah. Jeff said, in my 35 years of playing craps, that's the best role I've ever seen. It was bizarre. I rolled for an hour. Yeah. They're so fast. It, oh, would, God. it would have been two hours in other places. You and I talked about and, it. Once more people came to the table and there was there were so many chips on the table, right. a lesser crew, it would have gone slowly. They were we're lightning fun. fast. It was it, fantastic. Yeah, the, the more bets came, it seemed like the faster they got. It <sighs> yeah. was crazy. Yeah. I rolled so many hard ways. I can't Tons believe. Tons of hard ways. Now you weren't on the hard ways. I didn't bet any hard ways because I didn't have any bankroll, and yeah. I, you know, I didn't want to waste my money there. Yep. I never bet a hard way that whole nope. time. And you rolled so many points. You definitely would have won the six point fire bet if they had, oh, yeah. had it there. They, they had did had not. There, right. All they had was the all tall small. Right. Tell them about that. Well, four times I got within hitting either the small or the tall by one. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And sometimes it'd be like a nine and a four or something. Right. 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 And then I would make my point, whatever it was, and I'd seven on the come out. Yeah. So, so it you- all goes away. <laughs> and then I get the dice again. I establish a point. I roll all the way again until I'm one away on either side. And then make my point seven out. That happened. No, not seven out. I mean, not seven, seven on out. the come out. Seven on the come out. Right. Yeah. That happened four times. <laughs> yes, it did. Oh, I was so like, <laughs> God, I can't hit that. You know, he's got five or ten dollars out there, but I'm thinking, just hit that once, right? Yeah. No, I just kept rolling points yep. and points and numbers like yeah. crazy. I think Jeff said he won like over ten thousand. Yeah. On my roll. Yeah. And he was just ecstatic. Oh yeah, and it got us back. For the yeah, trip, it I mean, it back, was, oh my right? gosh, Yeah, it was I was huge. able to pay yeah. you all the money you had lent me yeah, and everything. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is, is I finally sevened out and the dealer turned to Mark and said, well, that's going to be hard to duplicate. And mm-hmm. I said, I don't know. He's a better roller than me. And sure enough, tell him what happened. I had a great roll. Now, it wasn't as good as yours. It wasn't as long. But I made a ton of points. Right. And I made them all. You made them all. One of the yeah. early in my roll. Right, right. So you early. do. <laughs> I mean, very early. It was like, boom, 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 boom. Oh, we hit them all. Yeah. You know, it's like, and, you know, <laughs> after your big roll, I thought, I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to go $25 Pass line, continuous come bets with full odds. Right. And boy, what perfect timing, because yes. I had a great He had a great role. role. Yep, yep. Back and then back. after that, Jeff colored up and left, smiling yep. so yep. big. Yep. Yeah, he made it like another 10000 on your roll. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I don't believe in fate or kismet or, you know, I'm not real romantic or poetry. Yeah. But it was so nice on a trip where... Maybe not our last Vegas trip, but certainly the last trip where we're going to travel to Vegas together. You know, right. we drove we, together we'll, from San Diego. We'll probably meet there, yeah. In the future, maybe we'll meet there. But for right. our final trip to have that big a roll on the last night, it was right. the last night we were there, Right, was sure sweet. So yes, that was it nice. was very yeah. nice. So yeah. we, we had a happy drive home. Yes, it was very <laughs> happy. Now, for all transparency, we did play a little bit after that. Yeah. So I think it was ultimately losing trips for both of us, even <laughs> yeah. with that great role. But it tells you how stuck we were, you know, right. to begin with. But uh, yeah, that was but really But it wasn't something. much. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that was the least of our worries, yeah. really. So a fantastic trip, again, you know, for kind of our last trip, at least, right. you know, going together. So that was uh, great. Yeah, uh, we didn't have any really bad experiences anywhere. No. And I, I'm going to say that Virgin wasn't that bad. No, I mean, it's just that it's, it's just kind of after weird. After we played there for a while, it's like, oh, yeah, let's, let's go back go to back. Bally's. Yeah, yeah we're, we're done. But we yeah. didn't have any bad. I saw several people from Harris Rincon mm-hmm, there. Yeah. I, not going to name people, but there was quite a few nope, people we knew from Rincon. You know, there. the only and bad dealer that we had was at Flamingo. You know who I'm yeah, talking about. I don't know. Right. She was just in a bad mood that day. She, and she wasn't she, terrible. But No, no, she wasn't terrible. She was just like not in a good mood. You know, didn't thank me for a tip, that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, was that, well, you know, and so just it, was kind of surly yeah, a, little a little bit. bit. So other than that, yeah. you know, uh, Other again, than that, yeah, yes, everyone was you know, good. It was, it was terrific. Anything else you can think of for uh, this, Well, Mike? While you were playing poker, Phil and I walked around a bit mm-hmm. and we went into Cromwell. We didn't play or anything. We were just walking through, cutting through there basically. Yeah. And they had moved all the craps tables from the front area by the strip yeah. to the back of the casino by the cage. Oh, that's too So bad. there's no tables up front there anymore. And they used to have three tables up there and one in the back. So four total tables. Yeah. Now it's all in the back and they only had three tables. That's too bad. And, I liked having only, those tables there by the strip yeah. uh, oh, it right was there with very the nice. Yeah. Well, there's more room there too. In the back, yeah. it was a little more crowded. Yeah. So that was one thing we did when you weren't there. We walked around a little bit to different places. They also moved the craps tables at uh, Paris. 
Yeah, right. So mm-hmm. they were on that. one side of the cage, like kind of by the front of where the cage is. Right. And now they're behind the cage in another area right. that doesn't get a lot of traffic. Yeah, and I didn't. And it's, I didn't like playing there, Mike. We played yeah. there a little bit. I'll be honest yeah. with you. I don't know what it is. It's the yeah. atmosphere. It's the so, atmosphere yeah. or something. I don't yeah. really care for that either. Yeah. Phil said the same thing. Yeah. He said he, you know, a lot of times he didn't like playing yeah. there. Yeah. Anyway, good trip, Mike. Tell us about your moving here soon, uh, like yeah, within next, a week, within and five days. Your plans and how are you feeling? And well, you know, not feeling the... so well. Okay, because yeah. it's well, I take my chemo stuff on Saturday, so right. And just Sunday, Monday, Tuesday are kind of rough days. So people know it, it is chemotherapy. It is not because of cancer. So, right. It just uh, helps kind of suppress your immune, immune system. system so right. That, yeah. So that the steroids will work better. Yeah, okay. On curing me. But I mean, you know, chemo. It, it's, oh, it's nasty stuff. Yeah. And it knocks I, you out. Yeah. So. I'll tell you what. I always felt bad for patients over the years who were on chemo and stuff. Yeah. And now I have a whole new perspective. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It is absolutely terrible. Yeah. It's something hell to go through. Yeah. So it's funny because we're leaving on a Saturday morning to drive, and that's the day I'm going to take my chemo. Oh, so yeah. I'll be sick for the first three days of that trip, which, okay, so which ought to be fun in the car. <laughs> you're leaving this Saturday. Uh, yeah. You're going to take your time making your way to Minnesota, yeah, right? We're gonna, short driving days. Short driving days, four hours, and the stop a lot and mm-hmm. stuff like that just to, well, for two reasons. One, me. And two, it's just kind of nice to not... Have to wear yourself out driving. Sure, eight, it's a 10 stressful situation anyway, yeah. moving. So, right. yeah. Uh-huh. And so we're taking our time and then we'll get back there in about five days. Okay. Instead of two and a half. Okay. And you're going to be staying with your mother in law initially while you look, right, for, while we a look for a or, house or yeah, something and stuff. Like that. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I don't know. We may take a few months. Sure. I, I, who knows how that's going to go. Okay. All right. But yeah, we're going to stay with her initially. Okay. And uh, that's going to be it. We're going to be in a little tiny small town. Yeah. No traffic. <laughs> One stoplight yep. in the whole town, which I actually ran. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Without even knowing, they put it in. You know, we were there one summer, and then the next summer, I didn't know there was a stoplight there. I ran right through it. Oh, funny. All right. Well, best of luck to you, and okay. we will try to get an episode out here in two weeks. We'll see. It yeah. depends on where you're set up. You well, we not... get there that Friday, and yeah. then hopefully by Sunday, I'll be all set if up. If you're up can for do it. it. You know, yeah. Yeah, if if you're it's up not for Sunday, it. it'll be Monday or Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it'll be... We'll, we'll arrange something. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, very good. Best of luck on your trip. Thank Safe you. travels. Yeah. I want to say one thing before we end here. So there are many ways that you can get a hold of us. One way is to just go through our website. There's a contact us button and you actually fill out a form and we get an email. And I've left it up there because, you know, if people don't know our email or just, you know, it's an easy way to contact us. One thing though is you have to put in your own email address into the form so that we can respond to you. And if you type that in wrong, it might be harder for us to respond. And in right. fact, that happened twice within the last week here. In one case, it was r- a real obvious typo. And I was uh-huh. able to figure out what the real email address was and respond. In another case, it was from somebody named King. He wrote, Hey guys, heading to Vegas June 15th through the 19th for 10 year anniversary. Here's a karma donation on the hard six. If it hits, I'll parlay at once. My wife, Denise, and I listened to you on the way to the casino. Wish us luck. Great. So good luck on that. I tried to respond uh-huh. with the email address that he gave, and it just kicked back. And uh-huh. I tried a couple of other combinations, and it just didn't work. So, right. King, I wanted to let you know that we did get your message, and thank you very much for the bet that you're going to make. And if you want to contact us, just write us back at you can bet on that at gmail.com. You know, when you email us directly, obviously we get you know right. your correct email as address and we can respond. So, by the way, my email is going to change. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. okay. So, all right, I'll give you the new one. Okay, I'll give you. Uh, yeah. So, and make sure you contact any listeners. The, a yeah. lot of listeners have been reaching out to you, right, right, to find out you know where you're going to be and maybe meeting up in Minnesota because right. there are a lot yeah. of people who live in that area, right. So, and I'll yeah. probably just give that out on one of the podcasts as soon as. I okay, know your for email, sure your new email. Is. Okay, yeah, yeah that yeah. Gets good. I'll have plenty of time to answer emails, Mark. Yeah, I'll that's be, great. I'll be just sitting there answering emails all day. <laughs> And again, we got a lot of phone calls. We will hit them on our next episode. Right. Hey, we want to thank some people for some recurring donations. Jeremy at the Color Up YouTube channel. James. Kurt. Robin from Anytime Gambling. And Nathan, thank you very much for those recurring donations. We also got a donation from Tim. May trip for my wife's birthday and last stay at the Mirage. Yeah, because the Mirage is being taken over by right. uh, the, the Hard Rock. <laughs> 
Great podcast every week, and go Chargers. Oh, a little something nice. for you there, there Mike. Even though there you, you claim go. you actually claimed on one of these episodes that you were no longer a Chargers fan, you clearly still are. Yeah. Shame anyone. on you. Yeah, anyone who knows. I I want to keep the peace by saying I'm not a Charger fan. Deep down inside, I'm always uh, bleeding, right. uh, you know, uh, what is it, baby blue? <laughs> yeah, ba- yeah, right, baby blue. Powder baby Powder blue. Powder baby That's blue. That's right. Well, yeah. you're going to be a... Vikings fan now, right? Or I've you always, always been a Vikings right. yeah. fan. Yeah. Okay, yeah. very good. Also, a donation from Billy. Heading to Vegas with a couple friends for four nights. Going to eat, drink, and see some AEW wrestling. Oh, fun. Oh, I hope yeah. you have a good time. For the- <laughs> Thank you guys for the podcast. Have you seen that, by the way, the wrestling where they reviewed WWE Legends of the Past? And they talk about their lives. A TV it's like show? A, yeah, it's like kind of like a documentary TV show. Oh, I haven't seen it. No. And they do it like once a week with a different wrestler. Oh, uh, from the past. Yeah. It's kind of fun. Yeah, I mean, I'll bet. it gives you a lot of insight into wrestling. Yeah. I mean, a lot of like how their lives are. Sure, though. sure. It's rough. Oh, yeah. They, you, know, you know, you can I say mean, what you want about wrestling. Yeah. And they, they all <laughs> say they're entertainers. Yeah. You know, right, they'll sure, tell you right course. up front. Yeah. They're entertainers, but it's rough. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. yeah. We also got a donation from Todd Goddess. Karma donation for a 360 Vegas vacation. Yo, 11 trip. That's going on right now. Nice. Good luck to everyone who's at 360 Vegas vacation 11. And he says, thanks for all you do to keep us entertained. Well, thank you, Todd. Also, a donation from Richard from the UK. He did not provide any kind of message, but thank you, Richard. We appreciate that. And finally, a donation from Chris from Round Rock, Texas. Wish me luck at the Vegas craps tables. I taught some friends how to play, and they can't wait to <laughs> find. Nice. It's always good to get some new players at the table. Hey, that's the, that's the key. Take a newbie. Yes. You always win, yes. right? Like, <laughs> I mean, it's a selfish it's thing. It's guarantee. But, yeah, guarantee. Hey, be sure to check out our TV listing showing all the gambling-related shows coming up within the next two weeks. And you can bet on that.com slash TV dash listings. And our list of gambling-related movies at you can bet on that. Dot com slash movies. We'd love to hear from you. Call our voicemail hotline at 951-292-4377. That's 9512-WAGERS. 9512-WAGERS. Or you can email us at you can bet on that at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at you can bet on that and on Facebook at facebook.com slash you can bet on that. Finally, please go to your favorite podcast app and write a review of the show. We love getting your feedback. Well, Mike, this may be the last show that we do together in the same room. Yeah, there may be. There's going to be a few where we're together when you come out. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're going to be your family. Well, definitely coming in September for a week or so. So we'll try and do one there Uh because we'll probably go out to Rincon or something, and we'll have some stories. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You never know. I mean, with scheduling everything, but from this point on, it's going to be more of a remote thing. So you know, uh, bittersweet in that respect. Yeah, we'll have a lot to talk about still. Oh, oh, definitely. I'll be texting you, complaining. Or yep. or building up the Padres all season yep. long. Yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Who are, by the way, doing very well. Very well. Only yeah. a half game out of first, first place. place. So, yeah, yeah. We're very yeah. happy about that. Yeah, hopefully it'll keep up. Yeah. I mean, everyone who knows I'm a big Padre fan keeps telling me, oh, yeah, they're going to, you know, at the end, they'll just oh, and we're, fall apart. We're ready for that, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. And I'm saying, yeah, I know that, but I can be happy now, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was nice. Our last night at Rincon this week. Yes. We, we went up there, got our free play, played a little bit, yeah. and it went pretty well. That was actually and a lot of fun. That yeah, last night, a, I brought every single one of my, my TV show t-shirts, <laughs> right. and I changed every half hour into a new shirt. <laughs> what was funny is when Jeremy came, we had been there a while, and you'd already changed several times, <laughs> but he just came on shift. And so he was there, and you went and changed, and he looked at you and he said, did you just have a different shirt on? And you were like... I, what? I don't know what you're talking about, Jeremy. You're talking about. Yeah, you're, he just looked like what the you're hell? Hallucinating or something. So I did that all night long, silly little silly so, thing. Yeah. But uh, you know, that was it was nice. funny. I'm thinking the camera like going into the restroom <laughs> sees this guy all night go in the restroom with one shirt and come out with another. And I'm thinking, what the hell is going on here? And a lot of the dealers and staff and everything uh, yeah, say goodbye they, to you. So they that all was shook nice. my hands yeah. and stuff. Yeah. That was very yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're a great. Group, yeah, it's been really. a lot of fun. Going up there, yeah, yeah. and you'll still go occasionally. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and we'll still stay current. So, you know, Wendy, don't worry, we're coming back. (laughs) (laughs) All right, thanks for listening. Good night. I had no idea you were so talented. The audience is going to love you.